Alright guys, I need to show you how to calibrate your printer. And calibrating your printer basically just means taking a load of measurements and then tweaking them once you find out that you weren't as accurate as you thought you were. Um, to start out with, uh, this, is a, this is a nice little layout that shows you where to make your measurements. I'll go ahead and post a link to that on the video. Um, but to get these measurements you need to do a few things uh, first off go ahead and connect uh, to your printer as we've done a few other times and right now I'm using Repetier uh, but we're gonna go ahead and show you how to do that with the Marlin firmware like I've been using uh, so far and so go ahead and connect and home your printer and one second. Okay, I'm opening up the uh, Marlin so that I can show you where to look for these things. Okay, so uh, as you saw from the picture, we have to make a few measurements on our printer to make sure that it moves correctly. Uh, the first one that we're going to concern ourselves with is the delta smooth rod offset. And then this is the reason that we went ahead and homed our printer. It's the distance from the tip of your extruder at home position to the center of your smooth rod. It's, you know, it's not a smooth rod in our case, but that's what the term is. Uh, so home your printer to start out with and take measurements off of your three pillars and you're going to want to average these because you're probably going to get uh, a number that's different from pillar to pillar because we haven't gone ahead and adjusted our end stops you can use this value to adjust your end stops that is to say you can adjust it until your measurements from tip to center of your smooth rod are uniform across all three and then you will know that it's perfectly centered <clears throat> This isn't the way I do it. The way I do it is to go ahead and start off, get our rough measurements, and then tweak our, our, um, tweak our, our final, which comes in the, in the firmware under our print radius. And basically, all of these measurements are combined to give us a final number and we can edit that number directly as you can see in the firmware we have this value delta radius and this is what all of these values that we're going to come up with are going to give us this value and we can go ahead and edit that directly afterward by simply adding or subtracting a value from this so getting a rough measurement is fine just make sure that you get a good rough measurement you know uh, you don't want to have to tweak this thing too much so like I said go ahead and if your motors have turned off while you were doing this go ahead and rehome it just so that you don't have to deal with slippage and go ahead and measure that that's going to be your delta smooth rod offset your delta diagonal rod is simply your measurement from here to here. So measure all of your rods because they may not be uniform. You have to make six of them. So repetition, uh, unless you're very good at what you do or you ordered some and they were put together on a jig or you made your own jig, just go ahead and measure them and take the average of those. Getting a good, a good measurement is, it just helps. It helps a lot. Um, delta radius is going to be the distance from this knuckle on your effector to the middle of the smooth rod so you go ahead and take those measurements as well once you've got all your measurements what you want to do is simply plug them into your Marlin firmware as you can see you uh, if you if you go and go to find and you find diagonal it'll take you right to it because it's only in there in this in this part so go ahead and update your values delta segments per second you don't need to mess with but go ahead and put in those other four values that you see from here 
the carriage offset, the delta radius, the delta effector, delta effector offset, which is measured, as you can see in the printer, in the picture, from, it looks like the edge of the effector to the, uh, your knuckle, but I always measure it from the middle, uh, because that makes more sense. Honestly, I don't think that's drawn correctly. So, measure it from the center of your effector to your smooth rod, and that's it. Plug them in, upload your firmware, and then we're going to go move to the next step. What the next step is, is making sure that our printer is moving flat. So what we will do is, again, make sure that we home so that our motors are connected. Uh, after a short while, they turn off. And then what you want to do is, actually, before you do that, there's another, there's another measurement you need to take. I'm sorry. You need to measure the distance from the tip right here is what I have 257.1 measure from the tip of your extruder to the middle of your bed and if you've centered if you've got the uh, if you've got the, the heated bed like I do you'll have this little dot and you can get pretty close to the center of your bed so measure from the tip of here to the top of your bed and as you can see, I've already got the spring clips on, but uh, you're going to want to do this with it hard mounted to the frame, or at least level. Uh, so you would level this piece and then level your bed, just to make sure that it's flat. Um, but a better way to do this would be to start with it hard uh, uh, attached to your frame, so that you don't have to worry about your bed possibly being tilted. This is going to cause you a problem when you do your end stops. <clears throat> so, what we want to do is go to our printer face, again like I said, home, after you've measured your uh, distance from the tip of your extruder to the bed, and you plug it into this value here, manual Y or Z home position, which is the, the, print, the, the distance that your effector can move before it hits the bed, uh, go ahead and upload your firmware, home, and then we're going to go and issue a command in printer face, we're going to go Z, G, zero, Z30. And what this is going to do is actually F6000. Let's do it a little faster because I've got a pretty good idea of this, right? So the reason that we're going with 30 is so that we can make sure that we are not smashing into the bed. But I don't think we're going to be off by 30 millimeters, but you know, uh, <laughs> just be safe. So here we go. Issue the command. We're going to come down really close to the tip of the, to the bed. And I should actually probably get this stuff off. Okay. All right. So as you can see, we're pretty far away from the bed. So in Proner Face, like I said before, we can go ahead and move in increments, and I'll stop switching you back and forth, and I'll simply tell you what I'm doing with Proner Face. Okay. So we're going to move down 10, and we have these movements set to a slow value in Proner Face. We're going to move down 20. And now, in our firmware, it thinks that we are 10 millimeters away. So we're going to go ahead and move in 1 millimeter ticks. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. All right. Now, as you can see, we are really smack dab on that guy. doesn't have to be amazingly perfect, but you really need to be really close. You see, that's a pretty good height for uh, making a print. Maybe a few tenths of a millimeters higher would be better, but um, this is a good good place for you to start. Okay, so if you have gotten this close in your firmware, good. If you have actually pushed into your bed, go ahead and lower that value for the manual Z home position and decrease that. If you're still far away from your bed, go ahead and increase that value. And this is the iterative process we're going to go through in doing our firmware. Okay. The next thing we want to do is we want to move up 5 millimeters. So let's go ahead and move up 5 millimeters. 2, 3, 4, 5. Okay. So we have moved up 5 millimeters. And now what we're going to do is ensure that our effector is moving correctly. And what I mean by that is we could have bowing or cupping. Uh, so we need to go ahead and make sure that it's moving flat. 
So we're going to move to the right 10. <clears throat> and if it seems like it's moving pretty flat, we're going to go ahead and move closer down to the bed. And we're going to move right 10 again. Yes, this looks pretty flat. Okay, and we'll move right 10 again. All right. So now we're going to move back to the center of the bed. And we are going to move down 5 millimeters. We're going to move all the way down to our lowest value. All right. So now we're going to do that same check and make sure that we don't have any bowing or cupping. All right. Yes, it looks like we are able to move all the way out to the edge with no problems. This is what we want. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and home the, the printer and explain to you the process. So earlier, if you were moving your printer around and you did not get that beautiful movement that I, you just saw, what you're going to need to do is simply modify this value like I said before. Okay, if you're if when you were here your your printer moved up like this in a, it would not be this drastic but if it moved up like this you would need to subtract an amount from your default delta radius if your if your effector moved in a, a downward arc you would need to add values to your delta radius and after you've gone through a few iterations of that um, and made sure that your it's moving correctly. Um, <clears throat> this is where we go ahead and start adjusting our end stops. Um, we are we were assuming that you checked in every direction uh, when you were checking your default delta radius because there is a chance that your end stops were giving you that problem. Um, so if you did check in all of those in every direction, you checked as you were moving this way towards this pillar, as you moved towards this pillar and you were going flat and, and it wasn't bowing and it wasn't just like basically moving in a slanted arc, um, then that's why that's when you would need to adjust your delta radius. If you were moving flat but you were moving at a tilt, this is when you need to adjust your end stops. So the way that you do that is simply to home, you move to the center, you move in front of a pillar, and if you are too close to this edge, you simply move your end stop up. If you are uh, too far away, you move your end stop down. And that's how you adjust your end stops. It's uh, something that I've already done with this printer, but um, I, f I think you'll be able to, if you're, if you're 30 millimeters, five millimeters away from your print bed, when you move your effector, if you're seeing bowing or cupping, that's a problem with your default delta radius. If you're seeing a linear movement and it's tilted, that is a problem with your end stops. So uh, that's how you calibrate the printer. It's going to be a lot of trial and error and there are a lot of help references out there, but this is all you need to know for a delta printer. If you built your frame square, if these are the right distance apart from each other, they're not tilted. Um, you might want to go ahead and check that and make sure that your frame is square. So simply measure from here to here. Um, if you've exhausted all of your other prob of your all, all of your other options, go ahead and measure your corner posts on all edges. Measure your corner posts at the top. You're going to make sure that your frame is square. Otherwise, it's got to be a problem with your firmware and the movement unless you're skipping steps. You know, these are the sort of things you're going to have to figure out. But if you've set it up with the normal bill of materials, you shouldn't have a problem with skipping steps. Um, yeah, I mean, the firmware is pretty well set up, but you do have to adjust for, you know, your prints. You have a couple things that you're going to have to put in here, especially this part. This part, you know, may be a different thickness by a couple tenths of a millimeter, and that's going to cause bowing or cupping. You really are going to have to adjust it in terms of, you know, point values. I got really lucky, uh, maybe lucky, maybe it was the fact that I took multiple measurements and averaged them, but, um, I mean, 
I got whole values and I didn't have to adjust my default delta radius at all. Uh, I got I got a really good uh, really good build this time. I hope this helps. I'm gonna go ahead and move on and show you guys how to uh, attach these spring bed clips and how to set up the SD and the LCD. This is the smart adapter uh, SD LCD from RepRap. Um, and then we're done. Cool, right? All right. Show you guys.